so, you know, we come from the generation where you can never have one source of income. Correct. <clears throat> and kind of piggybacking off what Ryan was talking about as far as leveraging, you know, a lot of cats, even though the bank accounts say you're wealthy or you're rich, mentally, you're still poor. Right. You see what I'm saying? How do you or how did you leverage saying the money that I'm receiving from the Patriots, the money that I am receiving from the Jaguars, how did I put that to use and how did you come upon these different, uh, you know, entities to render, render coin? The thing is this, Kim, I, uh, I made a, a gang of mistakes like we all probably have, especially not coming from, you know, uh, <clears throat> I guess, um, a background of financial awareness. I was the first person to go to college in my family. Uh, first person to make a million dollars. Mm. I don't know nothing about finance. I have been screwed up several times, right. right? Trusting people, the whole thing. And then eventually it comes a moment where you have to step back and say, I got to take full control of this because at the end of the day, if I, if I go down, I'm gonna go down doing it my way. Correct. Pretty much your, your mindset, right? Even now. Um, so, so really, it's, it's a matter of how important it is to you. That's the question you have right. to ask yourself. Um, and for me, having been burned, you know, multiple times, uh, actually twice, my first agent and the financial advisor, mm. I said, I want to teach my boys, my kids, what not to do, mm. what to look for. And, uh, and, and when you put that, you know, into uh, perspective, then you start moving differently and start making better decisions. Right. And, and, and truthfully, I don't make all the right decisions, but when I do take those shots, I understand how far I'm gonna fall. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to realize, um, this is my buffer, yeah. you know? So you can't just shoot your shot just to shoot it. You, you gotta, uh, uh, you have to strategize and put yourself in certain situations that if you do miss, you ain't gonna kill yourself, but you took your shot. So give me, give me a situation where you've invested some money and it was lucrative for you, mm -hmm. and you've also, give me a, a horror story, so to speak, to where you invested money and you lost. Well, the horror stories are easy. Give them the horror story for you. <laughs> the, the horror stories are easy. I mean, um, you know, again, trusting people, uh, under, not understanding initially what a POA was power of attorney mm -hmm. for, for most people. And again, just really the, the most horror story is just trusting in people that you thought were a friend and was going to do right by you. Right. We invested in a casino project in Alabama. Mm. And initially, you're saying the casino, we know what casinos do, they don't make money. Yeah. Uh, but Alabama has a lot of different laws. Right. So more so than the person himself putting those funds in that investment that we actually signed off on, mm -hmm. it was the, the, the fine print that we didn't look at. Right. You know, that Alabama can change, you know, this, this structure, the structure of the entity whenever they Discretionary felt Discretionary like. to their. Right, so that's what happened. So for us, that was a horror story that was $2 million mm -hmm. that was gone until we had to uh, fight in court to get majority of it back via yes. settlement. So that was, for, for, for me, a horror story because I'm on out, outside of the game now. Right. You know, because that was my shot. Mm. Like, all right, I'm going to do this and I'm going to just ride the wave into retirement right. or to post-career. Right. They talk about retirement. I don't call it retirement. I call it career change. <laughs> it, you'll never retire. Cam, Cam, you got Cam, fellowship. Cam on the way. He on the way. No, nah, no, nah, it ain't retirement. <laughs> he on the way. It's not retirement. It's career change. Shit, I'm now. <laughs> I'm now. Correct. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what fellowship is. But to go back to it, um, I think that um, that that part was the, the worst part because I took my shot heading out of the game. Mm -hmm. And it was two million. I'm like, how am I going to be able to make another two million without running the Fast. ball? Fast. You know what I'm saying? Fast. So that was a big question. And then that happened. But on the flip side, you know, being able to invest in, you know, certain startups, not all technological startups, mm -hmm. but different opportunities where you can see your money 10x, mm -hmm. you know, um, industrial uh, equipment, real estate. Yes, sir. You know, when I got out the game, really just buying up a gang of properties, duplex, single family mm -hmm. in 2009 and 10, when they were 
20, 30 cents on the dollar during the housing, yeah. the, the housing crisis. Right. You know, those were opportunities that those were paid cash out of pocket, free and clear. Yeah. And now I've made almost 10 times that money back. Yeah. Buying properties, 30 grand, you know, 40, 50,000. Right. That you cash out, you get rent, and then in the long run, right, it's you're just, still it's sitting it's on a big slow, asset. Slow and steady. So the game gonna do hey, what it gonna do. The strategic do. side, though, Freddie. The strategic side, because you just said it was the time. It was the time, and that's what a lot, like that's what our people don't know. Yeah. You got to work that time. You got to work the time frame. Right now, the real estate's stupid everywhere. Uh -huh. yep. This bubble's gonna bust. But sooner or later, this bubble's gonna bust, and that's when you capitalize on time, it. That's timing is, timing is always one thing, but I will say this. Because timing is everything in life. You know, your situation in college, right. my situation in college, the timing of it. God will slow you down or speed you up, whatever that looks like. But I think that coming from where we come from and not having certain resources, right? Granted, we weren't born with silver spoons. I was messing with you. All right, true. But, <laughs> you know, our people got to grind yeah. to teach us. We got to grind to teach our, our kids and that other generation that's behind us. When you look at most other races, cultures, cultures, ethnicities, they right. can they can afford time, right? They have when you look at the Asian population, they'll take that three percent for fifty years because they're building financial wealth. You it's know, generational, generational for wealth, generational right? Right, right? But when you look at us, we want the quick dollar. But you, we but, get in one thing and out of but you, one Fred, thing. You don't think but that, we're but learning. You don't, but you don't think that's about history, though? Yeah. Like, that's, that's, that's the point I'm making. It's about history. Because, because we no, never had really. nothing. You bring up, real quick, you bring up the Asian population. There's little, there's little, little uh, China. There's little Italy in every city. There's the Jewish population. They all get together. When black people get they It's called the projects. Black people, they call it the projects of the right. hood. Right. That's the problem, is that when black people get together, they call it the projects of the hood. That's where we don't, we just try to survive. Surviving's not thriving. And those other, those other, you know, people, those other uh, uh, demographics, they get together and thrive. We get together to survive. Right. And that's the problem with that's us. That's the point I, I think, was making. I think, and, and point taken, I think the thing that is also important that we don't do, and I'm guilty of not doing it for the most part, is when I first seen that, Check clear in my bank account. Mm. But my eyes got so big to the degree like, oh, man, I'm, mama, I made it. Right. And then we think just as easy, forgetting all the sacrifices that we made to get to that point, we think it's just going to be easy going into a new industry. And we're chasing that, that fast cash and trying to skip steps without educating ourselves about real estate, about industrial equipment, about tech, about things, uh, this, that, and the third. And I think for me, I see a lot of people of influence, they have side hustles, they have whatever. Oh man, I'm making this off trucking. Oh man, I got some trucks, I got some. But are you doing it or somebody else is doing it that you're trusting and do you trust that person? I had a realization creating fellowship where we are right now in Atlanta that the construction uh, company that I was doing, the boss kept telling me, he's like, man, you need to know everything. If you need somebody to come, you know, cut the fire on, you need to know it. We're not necessarily making drinks. You need to know the inventory of your drinks. You need to know how to, you know, cut on the fan, cut on the lights, bring the projector down, you know, do this, do that. And... We have always been in a situation, like I mentioned earlier, people have been doing things for us and it, and it handicaps us to a degree because you went to college at 18 years old. You played in the league all the way up until you were 30 years old. You're a 30 years old, 30 year old individual that's still codependent or reliant on something else because your whole life, people have been doing shit for you.